Yo, I'm Brian P. You're watching Bad C Tech, and today we're taking a look at the Mamba Wireless Gaming Mouse from Razer. The Mamba platform is not a new mouse. Models date back to like 2009, but it's one that's undergone several tweaks and revisions over the years until you arrive at the model lineup we have for 2018. And you'd be forgiven for being a little confused if you're shopping for one. The $150 2015-2016 model is what you're probably most likely familiar with, so I'll be making little comparisons to that mouse along the way, and Razer has improved on that design in almost every way. It measures approximately 126 millimeters long, 70 millimeters wide, and 43 millimeters high. It weighs about 106 grams. That's down from the previous model's 125 gram weight. That's a fairly massive reduction. Weight-wise, this puts it within striking distance of the Logitech G305, but falls short of the Logitech G Pro Wireless. At $99, the Mamba also falls $50 short of the G Pro Wireless's $150 price tag as well, so keep that in mind. The body is still the classic Mamba shape, which surprisingly I've never used before and actually kind of kicked myself for not having tried previously. I actually went with the Death Adder Chroma as my first FPS mouse and used it for well over a year before I even started looking around at other options. Here we see pretty much the same aesthetic we're seeing on all of Razer's recent releases right now. So you've got that nice, smooth, matte plastic body and the new rubber side grips, which are the best in the business right now, in my opinion. This is a seven-button mouse as it has dedicated DPI adjustment for both up and down as we're seeing on a lot of Razer's recent mice. And the side buttons are closest to the Death Adder, maybe a little bit smaller, but noticeably larger than we saw on the Basilisk. Unlike the 2016 model, the scroll wheel here does not have side-to-side -side tilt, but the wired Mamba Elite does. It's got a little knobby textured rubber. It's got a really light tactile feel. It sounds like this. And it's the easiest of all the latest Razer mice to depress, which I like. The triggers both have comfort grooves and they're equipped with Razer's own switches, which are developed in conjunction with Omron and they're rated at 50 million clicks. The overall feel of this mouse is very comfortable and even with the hand measurement of almost 21 centimeters from palm to fingertip, this mouse almost immediately guides my hand into a palm grip. Both the side buttons and the triggers sit noticeably higher than we see on the Death Adder. While I can use the Death Adder in both a palm and a claw, the Mamba feels unnatural to me in a claw grip. The chroma lighting has been revised from 2016 as well. Gone are the multicolored pinstripes that run along both sides of the mouse, and instead we get a Lit Razor logo on the backside as well as the scroll wheel. So just enough RGB to give it a little pop without beating up the battery too bad. On the underside of the mouse, we've got two small glides in the top front corners and one really large rear glide. You'll also see a storage compartment for the USB dongle, which always scores big points with me, plus an on-off switch and a profile select button. Gone are the resistance adjustments we saw for the triggers on the 2016 version, and the sensor's been updated to Razer's 5G optical sensor that we're seeing on most of the current releases. It's 1000 Hz and still 16,000 DPI, which we saw on the previous model, but the previous model used a laser sensor that was quirky, even problematic for some users, so this will be a welcome change for most. As it's the same sensor that I've used recently on both the Naga Trinity and the Basilisk, my current daily driver, it felt very natural for me in-game. And if you're somehow still concerned in 2018 that a wireless mouse can't be as accurate or as responsive as its wired counterpart, it's time to let it go, man. For me, this mouse feels no different performance-wise in-game than the Naga Trinity, the Basilisk, or the Death Adder Elite, which is to say it's fast and accurate with no jitter or tracking issues of any sort. Battery life has been improved to a whopping 50 hours versus 20 hours on the 2016 model. This is a captive battery, so no replacements, and to recharge, you will need to use Razer's own proprietary micro USB cable. This makes for a really clean aesthetic if you're the kind of guy that just sits around admiring the front of his mouse, but for for the rest of us, it's just one more thing that we have to remember to pack when traveling. The opening here is just not wide enough to accommodate most generic micro USB cords. It's worth pointing out here that if you're using the included wireless extender, it also makes use of the same proprietary cable. Given that on the desk, you'll probably be using this extender in close proximity to the mouse anyway, it really shouldn't be that big of a deal to take that cable out of the extender and plug it into the mouse when it's time to recharge. Unfortunately, gone is the really cool Chroma charging stand that came with the 2016 model, but I've read reports that it had some issues with range at a certain distance, and they have lowered the price of this mouse by 50 bucks, so they had to cut the price somewhere. Range for the 2018 model is no issue. I opted to use the wireless extender just to keep the charging cable close by, but I had zero problems when I used the USB dongle just plugged into the front USB in my case. All the features of this mouse are powered by Razer's Synapse 3 software, as pretty much everything is in the Razer catalog by now. And this is where you'll find all your chroma lighting, your button mapping, your hyper shift functions, and your macros. This is also where you'll find the ability to set up one of the four store 
keyboard profiles you can have with this mouse. This is the exact same implementation that we saw on both the Naga Trinity and the Basilisk with all the same strengths and limitations. Check out my Naga Trinity review, I'll link it up here if you're curious about all the deep specifics of the profile system, I'll even timestamp it for you. Now as far as competition, the Logitech G305 weighs about 7 grams less with a standard battery and at $60 it's a solid performer, but it doesn't have any RGB and it's seemingly designed for baby hands. It does have stupid long battery life though. The Wireless G Pro weighs 26 grams less and it's a performance monster, but it also has a pretty monster price tag coming in at $50 higher. The SteelSeries 650 is new to market, but it weighs 121 grams even with all the adjustable weights removed and it retails for 120 bucks. And it's packed with RGB too if that's your thing, but it only gets 10 hours of battery life per charge, though they say it'll recharge in 15 minutes. So all in all at $99, it feels like there's a lot of value here, especially if you're already invested in the Chroma ecosystem, which by now can RGB like all the things, including Philips Hue light bulbs, which we'll take a look at in an upcoming video very soon. Now, if wireless just really isn't your thing, but you're digging the shape, the $85 wired Mamba Elite is definitely worth a look as well. You get all the same internals and features, but you add side-to-side -side tilt on the scroll wheel, and you get like all of the RGB. So you get the lit logo, and you get the multi-zone pinstripes on either side. It's got the same rubber sides as the Death Adder Elite if you're into those, and it adds these sick-ass front air intakes as well. It also cuts the weight down to 96 grams. The Mamba is a super comfortable shape that I'm kicking myself for not having tried earlier, and for me, there's not a lot of negatives here. For my taste, it could be lighter for sure, and I'm greedy too, so I would have really liked to see a sniper button here, as well as the absolutely amazing scroll wheel resistance adjustment from the Basilisk. But if you're looking for a solid wireless mouse with great build quality, it's an easy recommendation. If you're already in the Chroma ecosystem, it's a no-brainer. Big thanks to Razer for sending this out for review. As always, I will leave some affiliate links in the description below if you want to grab one for yourself. That's it for this time. I'm Brian P. Thanks so much for watching. Don't forget to hit that like button, hit that sub button, and until next time, stay up.